Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, I want to talk to you guys about depth in games and games of the old past, like the Nintendo games and the arcade games and games that made you really work hard to get good at the games versus some of the games nowadays that are so complex and so crazy and so hard to learn and pick up that you never really can get in to the game or take the time to learn it. And those games back in the day, you could just walk up, anybody can play it. Any kid, any adult, anyone from any kind of age group or generation can come in and just pick up the game and start playing. But the ones that do it very well when it comes to game design are the ones that can find the balance in that sweet spot between not so complex where people can't just come in and start playing the, you know, playing the game. They have to go and learn this huge laundry list of of control schemes and and a lot of games nowadays do that and I find myself to be a little bit less um, willing to go and take the time to learn all those things I mean we all all of us have a limited amount of time right we all want things to be quick accessible efficient fast and ready to consume and ready to uh, utilize at the snap of a finger right and a lot of games nowadays are super duper complex. They come with a huge library of different control schemes and moves and all this stuff, kind of like the games back in the day that were like the fighting games. Some of those games back then were very difficult to pull off those master moves. And what I really love, and I think is the most, like the, the best way you can get a game, uh, get a game's challenge and depth and complexity to be perfect is find a game that you, anybody can come up and just start playing and it wouldn't take them too long to get the controls and feel things out and not have a huge tutorial to show you how to play the game, right? I don't want to have a game that's going to make me sit there and learn every single button like that. I just want to kind of walk up and naturally start to play the game. And I play a lot of sports games. So if you look at the 2K series, the basketball game nowadays, that game has gone from being a lot simpler, like back in NBA 2K8 time frame and the college hoops game that they had. Those games were a lot better. They were a lot, a lot easier to pick up, but they were very deep when it came to different strategies and things you can do. Now, the newer games, they have both. They're super deep and they're super complex, where when you walk in, you're like, whoa, I need to go to the laboratory. I need to go train for a long time. I have to go watch people online, give me all their different tips and techniques and really practice. And there's a grind to that. And I like, I do like that. Because it kind of makes you, it's kind of like any other sport you play in real life. If you go out there and you just hit, you know, if you start practicing tennis, for instance, and you just go out there and just swing, the more you practice and the more you learn your technique and hone in on your technique, the better you're going to get. And that's what those games are trying to do. And I totally appreciate that. But sometimes you don't want to have this huge hit list and cheat sheet next to you that says, okay, I got to go half a circle left, push X twice, push the RB button to make a fadeaway jump shot. I don't want to always do that, right? I want a game that maybe is a little bit easier to pull off a jump shot, but the depth that it takes to get really good at those jump shots when it comes to maybe timing or certain positions or certain strategy in the game when you would use it against what opponent, those are the kind of things that make a game to me a better game than a game that just loads you up with all, all these different maneuvers and techniques and buttons and things you have to learn. And it's just so intimidating that you just walk away. Or you never get to a point where you fully enjoy the game because, or get the depth of the game because you are too just overwhelmed with having to learn so much, right? And I think the perfect balance is when you have a little bit of complexity with a very, very deep challenging system. And if you ever play the games back in the day, like the Super NES games or N Nintendo for sure, a lot of those games were very small games, but they're very, very deep when it came to the challenge of the game, right? Mike Tyson's Punch Out's one of those games where it didn't take long to know how to do a right hook, left hook, power shot. The button, uh, the button options were very limited. On those controllers, you only had a few buttons anyways. But the, but, the, but the sweet spot about those, the part that I love about those is that you could spend 
months and months and hundreds and thousands of hours playing those games. And it would take you forever to get really good at those games because they made the challenge so hard because they wanted you to get your money's worth. You know, when you used to buy a game back then, that was all you were getting for a few months and you had to make it last, maybe even a year to your next birthday or, or, you know, holiday season. And like even like the Tecmo Bowl game from back then, I mean, Tecmo Bowl, you can start out, it's very easy to learn how to throw, pass and kind of run. But you once you got more familiar with your players and the way you move around, that snake pattern and the way that you pick plays and try to guess. It was a very simple gameplay, but it was so addicting and so deep and the stats and all the things that you could do. It was amazing. Those games were awesome back then, like absolutely remarkable back then. Now, I didn't love the arcade, like the arcade style where you have to just pop, they were just made just to pop quarters in. It was like, okay, you're going to die in 10 seconds. Like they were timed, like Metal Slug or any of the games in the arcade, like even Tech Mobile, the first arcade game. It was just a coin, a coin machine, right? Even like Cyberball, those games, you just put the coins in, the time, you know, the timer goes off and you have to put more coins in, you know, or Dragon's Lair from back in the day. You know, you, they were all about putting, dying. They wanted you to die. And the earlier you died, the more coins you would put in. I didn't love those games a lot of times because it was like, I mean, I get why they did it and they were fun for the time, but I want to be able to earn my time. If I play really, really well, I don't want to have to just put a quarter in just because you tell me to, right? And Nintendo had a way, even Neo Geo, but they were more arcade, but Nintendo and Super Nintendo had a way where you could keep playing these games and they made them a little bit more like, you don't have to put a quarter in every time. You don't have to hit continue every single time and you can sit there and grind your way and you can get, so there was kind of like a mix between an arcade game and some of the games of today where you know, you could play as long as you can make it, but they were super, super challenging, like really hard. Remember back then it was hard and you got to a point where you really wanted to get good at those games. I put those games in front of my son and he can't stand it. He wants to watch a movie and just keep pushing buttons to see the movie go through, right? And I really missed those games. So, so what I'm trying to tell you guys in this video or what I'm sharing and, and what I would love to pass along to anybody out there making games is finding that sweet spot. I want to see more indie games out there that have a very, very simple pick up and play. Super Mega Baseball, I always mention that game. That game is so easy to pick up and play. It has a huge ego system, which is their version of a difficulty system, which is pretty cool where you can play any kind of difficulty you want. And I'll, I'm going to make a whole other video on difficulty, I think, because that's one of those I have my own opinion on. But they make it to where you can walk in and just start playing the game. But to get really good at the game and get very good at batting and knowing when to hit a power hit or knowing when to throw a fastball versus a slider and knowing how to run your bases, I mean, all that stuff takes the grind and the technique and learning how to play the game. And it's very deep when it comes to the depth of the game, right? It's challenging, it could be very challenging, but it's not overly complex, right? And that's what I wanna do with my game, Legend Bowl. I don't know if I'm gonna get there. It's easier said than done, but I want a game that you can pick up and play, but also gives you enough, enough depth and enough replayability that it allows you to enjoy the game for, for many, 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 many hours so that you can get very, uh, you know, you can get your money's worth, but you could also, you know, not be intimidated by all these crazy control schemes, right? So what do you guys think about games? Do you guys think they should be overly complicated? And do you guys like that part of it? Or do you guys like games that are a little bit easier to pick up, but they're very, very deep? Or do you guys like games that are just easy all the way around? You know, let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'll catch you guys next time in the next video. We'll keep doing these and uh, see if we can get better games out there. Maybe me or you, if you're making a game, let's make a better product. I'll catch you guys next time.